Hello, and welcome to the Power Up Conference 2021. My name is Casey Boyd. I am a school librarian, and it is the best job on the planet. You have come to the right session today. Regardless if you are a librarian or not, you will be able to pick up some wonderful tools that you can apply in your classroom or either in your library media center program. So I would like to just get started. So today's presentation is going to focus on teaching during a pandemic using Nearpod and other digital tools. A shortened version of this presentation will be available on my website, which is caseyboy.com tomorrow. So a little bit about me. I have been working in school libraries for 23 years. This is my third school district, and I currently work for the District of Columbia Public Schools which is located in Washington, DC. And I work at a middle school named Jefferson Academy. I teach um, sixth through eighth graders. And currently right now I'm serving as a school librarian and I'm also teaching one class, which is a media literacy class. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later in the presentation. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about me, you can uh, visit my website, as you can see on the page, as well as you can connect with me on social media. I love the Sociotap um, social media app. It's a wonderful app to use and consider if you've never heard of it. And that's one way you can uh, follow me on various platforms. I'm blessed because I um, work at a school that was uh, went through a full renovation about a year and a half ago. And as a, of a result of that renovation, my library media center was fully renovated. So I have two reading rooms, a fiction and a nonfiction reading room. I have a conference room. I have a lobby, believe it or not, with a huge uh, circulation desk, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner. And in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, I have a makerspace lab, which we do a lot of fun things in there. Um, and I have smart boards throughout the entire library media center. So it's really a great space. The kids love it. Staff loves it. The parents love it. I love it. So March 13th of 2020, that was really the last time I saw students in a face-to-face -face setting at my school. And just like you, um, once we were informed that we had to work from home um, and work virtually, I was quite concerned and I kind of did the freak out like a lot of us did. Um, I, I asked myself this question, which was, how can I support my students, my teachers, my parents, and my community uh, virtually? Well, I already had a lot of tools that were underneath my belt that I was able to utilize. And there's some that I hadn't thought about using in the virtual world and I was able to make it work. And that's why I'm here today to share some of those resources with you that you could possibly use. So here are some of my favorite tech tools and apps. I won't be able to go through all of them today because of time, but as you can see, there are a number of them and actually all of them are not listed on this uh, slide. Um, I do uh, use a number of them for different reasons. Some of them are used with students. Some of them are from my personal use in my PLN, my personal learning network. Uh, some are also for uh, are free. Others are at cost. And I'll be sure to inform you which ones um, do cost some, some money. So uh, here are the apps. And you know this is a, a thing to consider uh, while you're listening to the presentation today. My absolute favorite app to use for teaching and learning and instruction is Nearpod. And I know there's a lot that has been said about Nearpod, but I'm still going to talk about it because I love Nearpod so much. First of all, if you're not familiar with it, it's an interactive presentation tool. Now you have two choices. You can get the free version and it's very general and very basic, or you can upgrade and get the paid subscription. I recommend that if you work in a school district, um, you know, try and convince the school district to pay for a site license for the entire district, if not, maybe just the school, because that's what my school did. My principal saw the value in Nearpod and he purchased a site, um, a subscri subscription for the entire staff. And believe me, it was a, it's been a really great investment. You have two options here. You can do a live session with students 
or you can um, send a link to the students so that they can use their, uh, you can, they can actually access the lesson um, asynchronously. And see, the thing about this is that I have some students that they, sometimes they attend live lessons, sometimes they don't, they're, uh, they're extenuating circumstances that are taking place in the home, and I don't fault them for it. My attitude is, as long as we get the work done, you can keep up. That's my main focus, is that I want you to remain engaged. So, um, um, when I teach what, using the, the live lessons, I use Microsoft Teams, which is our live lesson tool that we use in our district. And the, uh, Nearpod works very well with Microsoft Teams. A uh, couple of bells and whistles about Nearpod, just to kind of talk to you a little about it. Um, first of all, here's one of the main screens. This is the Nearpod library. And this is one of the benefits is that um, there are uh, pre-crafted lessons for educators that are on the um, uh, that are within the Nearpod library. So as you can see, current events, question of COVID nineteen va vaccine passports. You know that's a current event that's taking place right now in in today's news. It's Financial Literacy Month. It's the month of April. So you will see a lot of current at um, uh, articles activities that re, that the kids can relate to. In my case, I like to get really creative with uh, Nearpod and I um, like to, you know, just use it to the best, to its full capacity. You know, you can uh, have the students do what I like to do is a temperature check at the beginning of the class period. And I'll say, okay, how are you guys feeling today? You know, um, and I, I may say, okay, I want you to draw a picture of how you're feeling today. And that's really funny to kind of see how they're feeling. Sometimes they're having a good day. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're able to laugh at themselves. And oftentimes, um, you know, it's a great way to just get kids to open up, especially in the virtual world, because this is really a hard experience, um, or I should say difficult experience for a lot of our students uh, to be cooped up in the house, you know, um, as we all are at this point. Um, I use it heavily in terms of importing a lot of other apps into Nearpod. It works very well. I like the uh, quizzes aspect. You can make your own quizzes if you want to. You can make polls. I have middle schoolers extremely, extremely opinionated. So the polls feature is really a, um, a great tool that can be used. Um, there's fill in the blank, open-ended questions to get kids thinking and writing. Uh, the collaboration board is really a, a really good tool to use with kids um, to get them to respond to like a simple re reading prompt, for example. Um, moving on, here's another example of how uh, I like to incorporate other apps into Nearpod and it works well with also Google Slides too, you know, uh, it also works with Microsoft Teams, you know, um, so in this case, uh, we were observing a lot of the things that were taking place within the Asian community um, in terms of Asian hate, and uh, this was a current event issue, so my students were studying this, so they were reading a couple of articles that or it was on the topic. And the only thing I did was I just imported them, the article into Nearpod where they could easily pull it up. And then I also incorporated a writing prompt for them to uh, complete. Now I use two different tools, the News Literacy Project and News ELA, which uh, provide a lot of full text articles, you know, for kids to read and also to discuss. And so that's really made a big, big plus in my lesson planning um, with uh, the students. Now, librarians, you're probably thinking, well, what's the in it for me? There's a lot of digital citizenship lessons that are embedded in Nearpod, which is really nice and in information literacy activities. So there's something across the curriculum for everyone. I don't care if you're a, a physical ed teacher, you're a, a art teacher, if you're a music teacher, there's something here for you. So next one I would like to talk about is um, Canvas. Uh, believe it or not, um, my district, even though we use Microsoft Teams for our live lessons, we use Canvas to house a lot 
of our, uh, our activities and lessons and links to a myriad of uh, materials so kids can um, uh, be engaged and also participate in lessons. My department, which is the library department, has a public forward-facing Canvas page. So in other words, you can access this page, you know, from what you see on the screen. You just have to log on to DCPS um, instructure.com forward slash courses forward slash uh, the code is 211378. It's right there on the screen. So you, uh, so it, at this point, what we do is every month we change these boards around, you know, so one month it was Black History Month. The other month it was also Valentine's Day. We celebrated little, some little lessons on Groundhog Day, you know, and what we do is we incorporate a lot of our digital tools um, with our research databases, along, of course, with um, our catalog for our eBooks, which is also housed on the site. Of course, you as a, as a visitor would not be able to access our, um, our uh, 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 ebook collection or our uh, digital resource collection. But there are some things that you will be able to see and possibly use and also maybe get some ideas for your district. So continuing on, this is another image from our Canvas page. Um, these are other, you know, areas that, you know, uh, that we use in terms of the different apps, uh, the different resources that are available for kids to use, as well as the staff. Um, and we're like any other district, a lot of districts use Clever. It's a really simple uh, single sign-on platform that can be utilized by kids and students. And so you can see uh, on the right-hand side of the page, library and resources is right there, you know, with all the apps. So we, not only can kids access all these nice digital um, resources through Clever, they, it also, they can also access it through our, our um, Canvas page. So essentially, there's a, a, a lot of ways that they can access uh, great content and information. So I'm a librarian, you know I have to talk about literacy. So we use a couple of uh, resources, but our most popular one is Sora. Sora is wonderful, it's an ebook app and it, it can be found on our um, Canvas page as well as on Clever. And the really nice thing about it is that it combines the ebook collection for the public school as well as the a public library. So when the public school and the public library are working together and they combine the collections, it, it means it's a dynamite collection in the long run. And so kids are able to access all these great books and content on the site. So what I do is I like to kick it up a notch on my social media, which a lot of my students follow me on social media as well as their parents. Uh, I like to create little memes and I like to highlight and showcase the books. So whatever month we're celebrating, whether it be Black History Month or, you know, it's currently right now, it's Poetry Month because it's the month of April. You know, I like to uh, really highlight great books that kids could be reading. Uh, so that's uh, the cool thing about that. And I also like to use Canva. I'm, we're very fortunate in DC that our district recognizes that Canva is a really great tool for teachers to use. And it's like a one-stop shop for any and everything with graphic designs, but it's at your fingertips. So everything you see on the screen here, I used um, uh, the backgrounds using Pic Collage. I also used which is another social media app that's very helpful, you know, for uh, creating backgrounds, but also I use Canva to really make my messaging pop and to really get the attention of my students and my parents. So these same memes that you see on the screen are the same type of memes that I actually will send to the staff to encourage them, to encourage the students to read books, as well as Every week, I usually put a meme in our, our um, parent newsletter so I can encourage parents to encourage their, their child to read new collections of books that are present in our ebook catalog. So 
Um, this is a little deeper for librarians. You, you probably recognize this, this uh, phrase is called book tastings. And essentially what book tastings is, is this is really a face-to-face, -face, a traditional face-to-face -face activity where you put a couple of books in the center of the table and the kids usually eat a snack, you know, and you have the table dressed up, you know, a picnic uh, attire and so forth. And the kids, they read a book for maybe two or three minutes. They just get a little taste of the book and they're eating a snack. And then at, when the timer goes off, they switch to another book and they continue to read it. That's essentially what a book tasting is. For years, I've been saying to myself, I'm going to do a book tasting. Got so busy, never did it. It wasn't until I started teaching virtually that I decided I'm going to try book tastings. And this is how I did it. I used Padlet, which is like a collaboration board tool, like in Nearpod. Um, and what I did was I created a board on Padlet and it's called Miss Boyd's Book Tasting. And um, I have different themed book tastings like one is fantasy comics as you can see on the screen another one is censorship and standing up for your rights graphic novels and computer science week only thing i did was i just created a collection of books in follow destiny and epic where they uh, the, all the books fell under these the same thing and then from there i told the students all right here's your assignment i want you to do a book tasting read three books just a little taste of these books for three minutes. And then I want you to report back and say, based off of that short little period of time that you read that book, what do you think about the book? What's your opinion of it? Do you recommend it to your peers? That was an easy assignment for students to complete, but I was using two mediums, which was Epic Books and Padlet, or either I use Follow Destiny and Padlet. The cool thing about this is that it's free. You're going to add easily accessible online through sharing the link virtually with the students. The students can work at their own pace and it's quite enjoyable. And um, from a perspective of a librarian, you are introducing kids to different genres of books. And uh, we want our students to be a little more adventuresome when it comes to reading books that, you know, are out, outside of their comfort zone or maybe books that they never considered reading. Well, this is a great act, uh, uh, activity for them to engage in. So this is book tasting. All right, Canva, we're going to revisit them again. Now, as I said, Canva is like your one-stop shop tool for anything that deals with graphic arts, you know, making flyers, posters, memes, you know, it can even be used to make, um, you know, little business cards for the kids, you know, with different activities that you want to do. Um, so in this case with us, um, school library month is the month of, um, you know, of April. And for the 20, 2021 observation, I decided to make some memes. And actually what you're seeing on the screen is a, a, a still shot. This is actually video. Um, when you view it online. And that's the nice thing about Canva is that you can incorporate still images on top of running video in the background. And it really just engages the viewer much more than uh, just a snapshot of a meme that you post online. And it continuously loop over and over and over again. The video plays over and over again it loops over and over again online for you, which makes it really nice. So I just come up with little slogans, statements and so forth. And um, this is how I create like little advocacy memes, you know, to really highlight the work that I do as a school librarian. So if you wanted to highlight that you are a school counselor, or if you are an art teacher or a math teacher, you really want to hype up you know, something about your program, you know, Canva is a great way to, uh, to do it. They have a lot of different pre-made templates that are on the site, makes it really easy for, um, you know, coming up with some great and dynamite um, material to share online. All right. Buncee is another one, you know, just like with book tastings, I've have been dragging my feet and I decided that I would uh, try Buncee. And it wasn't that I was avoiding it. I was just so doggone busy. I just didn't have time to sit down and actually try it out before the pandemic. So after the pandemic hit, you can kind of force to stay inside. And it, it kind of encouraged people 
like myself to try different social media applications to see how you can use them either, you know, just for yourself or maybe use it with students. In this case, I'm using it as a promotion tool. Um, we are blessed at my school to have a um, grant through the Kids Museum of Bethesda, Maryland, and we actually have a virtual makerspace. And really cool, nice activity. You can see on the right-hand side, that, that's some of the tools and the materials that are in the actual kit that the students received. And as you, as you can see, the students were making you know, flowers with um, pipe cleaner. You know, we're at the point right now because it's springtime and the kids are tired. So I wanted to do some more hands-on activities with them from now until the end of the school year. So this is why the virtual makerspace is fitting in extremely well right now. So uh, right now we're at the stage where the kids and I are doing a lot of skill builder activities, like how can you make a um, chipboard stand stand up by itself without it leaning on something you know and and here I'll just kind of circle on the screen you know that's how they were able to do it by cutting into the chipboard in a certain way putting it together and it can sit up by itself same thing you know creating a hinge how can you create a hinge using pipe cleaner and using a pair of scissors or uh, to poke a hole to Put the holes in it so you could actually loop the pipe cleaner in there so it's little tools it's, it's skills like that and the at first the kids are like oh this is easy and then they're like this is not as easy as i thought it's a little more challenging but i'm doing all this because we're leading up to a bigger project where they're going to have to combine all these little small skills that they've learned in time to their final project that will be due at the end of the school year really excited about that all right, Buncy. again, I love their backgrounds. They have some really dope, I mean, really cool uh, backgrounds and they change from month to month to month. So right now a school library uh, month, they have some preloaded backgrounds that have a lot of, uh, you know, library themes in them. If you're a, a content level teacher, if you're a um uh, uh, we call them specials teacher, like physical education, health, foreign language. They have different backgrounds that you can utilize. And with this, this is a, this is a screenshot, but um, on the left-hand side, I call it the burning flame kind of look, the Jefferson Academy virtual library and boss librarian on the desk. They're actually like, they look like flames when the video is running. And then, you know, I incorporated um, links to some of our more popular sites uh, for apps that kids are using on a regular basis. This one was used for Women's History Month. So I inserted this into the parent uh, newsletter and also the teacher's newsletter, which is published once a week by my principal. And it's just a friendly reminder as to say, I know your, your child has various assignments that they have to complete that's themed, meaning that this is around Women's History Month for crying out loud. Well, here's an, uh, some resources that you can access and it makes your life a little easier because we already have curated or compiled a bunch of information that will help your student, your child complete the assignment. So I also use this as a promotional tool to kind of get teachers to take a risk and chance on different things. We have a new um, app called Learning Ally, which is a um, reading motivational tool, which, um, our students are using. And a lot of my, my teachers were kind of like, it's towards the end of the school year, Boyd, really, you're gonna introduce a new app? So I had to be kind of creative. And because Buncee is so visually stimulating and it's so interactive looking, what I did was uh, I used this as a, a introductory slide to talk about Buncee. And again, the, the flaming Jefferson Academy Virtual Library you know, logo, the boss librarian logo on the desk. And then I also have a um, book over my head there. And the book is flapping open and closed, you know, which is kind of cool. And because of this presentation, I didn't know how the video was going to play. That's why 
I didn't even want to take a chance. So I'm so sorry, but that, that I, I'm not, I don't have a video running, but um, you know, sometimes different platforms get a little funny, you know, acting during presentations, but we're going to keep moving on. Um, so here you can see, I just like listed a couple of benefits of why the teachers to use the the application so this was something that got their attention and that's exactly what the goal was is to use this app for that reason to get my teacher's attention because they're tired okay all right so i've talked a lot about different apps let me just say this one way that i share to the world to my my uh I shouldn't say state because i'm in dc but the dc area uh but uh, and also my school district is through social media social media is really important for today's educator it's free it's very user friendly and it's a great tool of course that, that's used by all within the school building why do we use social media we use it for a variety of reasons one is that it can really help you communicate exactly what in the heck you're doing in your your library program or your classroom oftentimes people get an idea stuck in their head about what we're actually doing as educators well if you want to dispel some uh, misconceptions about you or your your profession or your overall your content area social media can help you do that um, it also helps me share the work that i do without even a, an administrator setting foot in my classroom you know um i find that when I share little snippets online um, on my social media platforms, a lot of my parents will see, will see what the kids are doing. And then they'll say, especially if they're one of my students, they'll say, I saw something on your teacher's Instagram page. Have you completed that assignment yet? You know, so I'll kind of get that response too, which is kind of funny. But um, overall, I like this because it's able, it gives me an opportunity and a really great vehicle for me to share the work that I'm doing with uh, the entire education community. And I want to say this over and over again, you're advocating for your students, yourself and your library program or your classroom. This is a way you can do that through social media. You're not showing off. You're just advocating for yourself. Let's just get that straight. And then, of course, toot your own horn. You know, you you know, you have to stand up and say, hey, this is what I'm doing and I'm proud of it. You know, I'm proud of the work that the students have done. They've mastered this particular app and it wasn't easy, but they did it. This is a way that you can show off your students. Now, here is a couple of apps, social media apps that I absolutely love. I love these plat the pl uh, these the following platforms in order that you see. Um, Instagram. Also, IGTV. I like Instagram because it's one of those visual uh, applications that can be used. But also, too, if I want to record a short snippet of class, meaning that my students' cameras are off for their privacy's sake, you only hear their voice. Sometimes I've had my students read picture books in honor of Black History Month, or we just, you know, did some poetry month um, readings. And you can hear the student reading the book, but you don't see them. And that's when I use Instagram TV, otherwise known as IGTV. I'm able to upload short video segments onto my Instagram page for my school community to view. Twitter is another one that's really helpful. I like Twitter mainly because, yeah, I can share what I'm doing in my classroom, but that's the greatest PLN that's out there. That you will find a rich community of people that work in your content area on Twitter. And they usually have some type of hashtag associated with their content area. Like I'm a librarian, I have teacher librarian TLC chat, or I should say TL chat, which is teacher librarian chat. If you're into technology, you might wanna look at ed tech, you know, or if you're an ELA teacher, ELA, you know, uh, but it's always a hashtag in front of these names or these acronyms, you know, so simple search on Google in terms of Google's tell me what my, uh, the different types of hashtags that are associated with social studies instruction. Believe me, there's a number of them that are very unique and they will, you, you'll get a good hit. Uh, Facebook, I don't 
uh, shy off of Facebook for this reason. My grandparents are very familiar and they use and they use um, Facebook heavily. And many of our grandparents are raising the kids, as well as uh, in my case with my mother, uh, she follows the school, uh, my niece and nephew school's uh, Facebook page. So in some cases, she knows a little bit more about what's going on in the life of the school than the parents do, you know. So it's interesting that our elders really, when they when they adopt a social media platform, Facebook is usually the one that they select because it's not as confusing as the others. And a lot of school districts still hold on to their Facebook page. And I don't think that's going to change. YouTube, I believe in investing in myself. I have YouTube premium. It gives me the opportunity to upload video, a lot of video of what's taking place in the life of my library program. Uh, Weebly, this is where my um, uh, website is housed. I have invested it myself again upgraded and I pay for my domain as well as my access to my own website um, uh, address, which I like. LinkedIn is free. That's a more professional site. So um, it's not where you would have fun and share memes. It's more very much so for networking and job promotion. And the new one that's out, and that's why it's kind of at the bottom of the, of the list, is called the Clubhouse. Um, just imagine a podcast where you're listening to different content, but it's interactive. That's essentially what the clubhouse is. And right now, the clubhouse is only available if you have an iOS or iPhone. Some people were, if I've been hearing, some people are able to access it through um, a, a tablet, um, an iPad, but I'm not 100% certain on that, so don't, um, don't quote me on it. But I've been hearing that some people are able to you know, get the audio that way. I host a room every Sunday night, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, called Boss Librarian and Friends. And it's primarily the lens of school librarians on this site. But from time to time, I may have somebody outside of the library world come and join us and to discuss different things. So if you'd like to come in and just listen to an hour long discussion, it's a lot of nice people in there. Uh, we meet every Sunday night. So your social media account, let's dig a little deeper with this. Now, as a rule of thumb, I always tell people, make sure that you check with your school district's policy uh, regarding social media, because every school district is different. Some school districts will say, hey, if you're going to have an account, it has, your account has to be named after the school it has to have your name in, in, the, um, in the title. Or they may say, uh, your, your account must be public. It can never be private. Every school district is different. So make sure before you establish an account, have a conversation with your building administrator and then read your district's um, 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 uh, policy around social media. I would recommend that you get the support of your principal or your building administrator um, because oftentimes a lot of schools already have social media presence. What you want to do is to tap into the school's social media account so that they are retweeting or reposting things from your library program so you can really get your messaging out to the parents. Um, it's important that you're mindful of your students' media release forms. Um, at the beginning of the school year, my uh, school uh, administration has my parents, will have my parents um, sign off on a document that basically says, it's okay that my child's image is used. You may take pictures of my child and the, um, the images may be used on social media. So that's pretty much the gist of what our, um, student media release forms would, would state, you know, um, but at the, as a rule of thumb, I always tell teachers and, and librarians, be very observant when you pick up a camera or phone to take pictures of kids, because especially I work with middle schoolers and they're very self-conscious of their appearance. And some kids just don't like to be photographed, even though their parents said it was okay 
that they could be photographed. Some kids just don't like it. So you have to be respectful. And if you have a child that's constantly turning around and averting their body so they can't be seen on camera, be respectful and just say, okay, let's see if another student would like to take the picture instead. Uh, last but not least, following students online is ill-advised. You always want to have a public um, conversation with uh, our students that we service. It's inappropriate to have a direct message or DM conversation with, with a student and they're a minor. So you, you, know, you have to protect yourself. It's not a good idea to have at all uh, conversations with minors you know, in a private uh, setting. So that's pretty much it on that. Okay, so social media hashtags. You have seen on previous slides that uh, I use hashtags a lot. Hashtags are a way that you can have one specific focus on a topic that's assigned to different posts on social media accounts. So for example, we use in our district librarian literacy leaders. We checked it out first and saw to see, was it being used by any other person on Twitter, for example? And when I say check it out, that means that I, in the search box, you just type in hashtag librarian literacy leaders or the name or, or of a possible um, hashtag you may want to use. You, you just put it in the search box to see if it's been used by somebody else. If it's been used by somebody else, you do not want to use that hashtag because it comes to be quite confusing for other users that come behind you. Find one that's very unique and um, not in use. So here's four hashtags that we use. Do we use them at all at one time? No, we don't. We use them for certain reasons. So that's why you see like DC needs librarians, but you don't necessarily see DC school librarians. We might use DC school librarians for other posts, okay? So that's pretty much social media hashtags. Also, here's a big hint. I like using hashtags in this respect with my performance review because instead of scrolling and trying to find, you know, examples of the work I'm doing online or in the community, if I go to my KC said it hashtag, or either if I go to um, DC school librarians or DC PS needs librarians, excuse me, I will find my posts of where I have actually posted content. And then I can make a decision whether or not that would be the link I would wanna share with my principal to my social media posts that is about a particular topic or it just proves that I'm doing something as requested of me for my yearly evaluation. So social media hashtags can really move the needle for your program, your classroom, and also yourself as a teaching professional. Okay, so um, continuing on, I do want to talk about this. If you would take a moment out of your time um, today, I would certainly hope that you would support me as well as my colleagues in uh, DC Public Schools. We're experiencing some threats to positions in our district where a couple of librarians have been unfortunately told that their position will be closed at the end of the school year. So we are trying to advocate and also kind of fight back a little bit. So we have our own t-shirts and I ask you to purchase a t-shirt, that would be nice, but what I'm really asking you to do is to sign a petition that will be sent to the mayor of uh, Washington, D.C., along with our chancellor and our deputy mayor of education. Uh, if you go to save schools, save school librarians dot org forward slash D.C. school librarians, you take a moment, read the petition, sign the petition. A copy of your signature will go directly to. The, um, the mayor, the chancellor, and the deputy mayor of education. And we will be most appreciative if you just do that for us. Thanks. All right, here's my uh, last slide that I'd like to talk about. My last slide is focused around this, which is self-published independent African-American authors. Listen, I am a school librarian and it is the best job on the planet. I absolutely love what I do for a living. So. 
one of the things I have observed over the years is the lack of diversity in uh, the publishing field, in particular, the, um, the lack of books that are produced, created, illustrated by African-American authors and illustrators. And uh, I, since I belong to the clubhouse, I come in contact with a tremendous amount of wonderful authors and illustrators that are kind of struggling to get attention for their uh, books. Well, I made a promise and I said in my next presentation, I would definitely um, put a slide up and show you a couple of books that I have um, run across over the last couple of weeks that uh, are great and um, they are worthy to be purchased for your um, for young children. And so these books are intended for kindergarten through um, fifth grade students. Uh, some of them can be read independently, while the majority of them, of course, with our younger children, can be read aloud to them. So um, really beautiful books that you see here. I own them. So I decided that I would also share them with you today. And um, uh, it's, uh, I, I promise you, you will enjoy reading uh, through them and sharing them with the young children, not only in your home, but also in your classrooms. And yes, um, I'm leaving the slide up a little longer because I think one or two of them are not sold on the popular Amazon um, website but the majority of them can be purchased on the uh, Amazon website. And if you don't find it on Amazon, I would just um, do a simple search for the author's name and I'm pretty certain their website will pop up and you'll be able to order the book directly from the author. All of these books are soft cover. They're very vibrant, very beautiful, very appealing to the eye. And I say that they are tested very well by my niece and nephew. They enjoy them. So um, again, thank you very much for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this brief presentation talking about all the wonderful um, uh, applications that you can use in the virtual or either the face-to-face -face world. These tools have worked well for me. That's why I'm sharing this with you today, you know, through the power up. 2020 conference, because this is the place to share, you know, those real great testimonials about how certain applications are really impacting student achievement, student learning, and student engagement uh, in schools. Now, um, you can connect with me. Um, I am boss librarian across all social media platforms. And my website is caseyboyd.com and I'm at dissociatap.com forward slash Casey Boyd. And uh, if you could, again, please sign the petition to support librarians in the school district. This is, these are tough times that we're living in right now and we need as much support from you <laughs> and everyone across the country. So irregardless, if you live in the DC area, if you lived in California or Washington state, Texas, Nebraska, Montana, uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Chicago, it makes no difference. You can support us and you can sign that the, the petition. So on that note, my name is Casey Boyd. I'm a library media specialist. It's the best job on the planet. I hope you enjoy this presentation and I hope you will continue to enjoy the presentations that are being offered by those plethora of great presenters today. So thank you very much. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye now.